welcome to Bastion Land Broadcasting, where tonight I'm going to be building Bastiards, i.e. people that live in Bastion. Um, and I'm going to be demonstrating how Electric Bastion Land has some stuff in there that you can use to make non-player characters. So the last couple of weeks we've been focusing on mapping, we've created areas for the underground, for deep country and for Bastion itself. But we didn't put anyone in there really. We had we had some sort of suggestions at what sorts of characters might exist in this borough or in this section of deep country. But today I want to look at the, um, well, let's look at what I want to look at. This, inhabitants of Bastion Land. This section was it was a relatively late addition to the book. I didn't want to have a set list of encounters in here, like the sort of equivalent to a monster manual in D&D. I wanted to have instead tools that let you create your own memorable characters in quite a quick and easy way. But I also wanted it to create some interesting characters because the thing that I always think with these, you know, random tables and procedures for creating your own content is it needs to be better than what you could just come up with anyway. So if I asked you to come up with a concept for who's running this shop in Bastion, you know, you'd be able to come up with some ideas on your own, but there's no point in me creating a tool to help you with that unless that tool is actually making the stuff you come up with better than what you would come up with anyway. So hopefully uh, these do that. And as with everything, I wanted every bit of the book to sort of, to tell you about the setting. And in a way, this set of like 10 pages is kind of the, the bit that people could just read through and get a really good sense of the setting. Because, you know, it tells you who you're going to be encountering. Um, and I know I go on about the art every week, but a couple of my favorite pieces here, the, uh, person wearing the gas mask was one of the first pieces of art that Alex sent me for the book. It was actually kind of in the very, very early concept art stuff. I think before, before we'd even agreed to do the book together, um, when he was sort of showing me some ideas that he had and, um, this kitty one, which I've talked about many a time before, but still a big fan. So there's a bit of guidance here as well, which I think I mentioned when I did the deep dive, but really the key is that these are tools, just as with the boroughs, the end justifies the means. So if you, the goal of this is to come up with some interesting characters to put in your game. So if you use the tools in a slightly different way than I would or somebody else would, as long as you're getting good results, that's the main thing you need to be, you know, that that's what you need to be thinking about. Um, so we're going to try time permitting to create five non-player characters. Um, as always, um, I'm at the, the pinnacle of technology and I'm using this thing called WordPad. It's, um, I like the rich text format. I think it feels very luxurious. It's the um, it's the red velvet of um, of, um, of word processing software um, formats, and I don't mean red velvet like cupcakes. That's that that's that's diminishing it here. I'm I'm talking like a, a red velvet rope. Um, so yeah, here we go. Rich text format. Um, so we're going to be creating five, uh, characters and those five characters are going to be sort of filling five roles because, you know, it's all well and good making five characters, but they need to be characters that you're actually going to use. So we're actually going to go back a bit here, uh, quite a way to Bastion and back when we were mapping Bastion, there is a page here on stocking Bastion and what this kind of talks about is the main kind of things that you would have in the borough. So it's all when I go creating your, your landmarks and your routes between them and your complications, but there also should be like good things in there, like things that the players will want to engage with. There's no point just having 
a bunch of weird places connected with um, connected with routes that are inconvenient because players will just think, what, what are we doing? What, what are we actually doing here? You need to put desirable things on there. So treasure is the most obvious one, but then we've also got patrons, who are the people that would perhaps buy your treasure or tell you where you can find some treasure. Specialists, who could be any number of things. The most obvious thing would be like a doctor. Um, but, you know, if you need a uh, someone who can pick locks or you need somebody who can, um, like, a, a solicitor or it could be any number of things, like a specialist, somebody who can provide a service or special knowledge. Mercenaries, exactly what it sounds like, people who will come and fight with you and shops, so people that are willing to sell you stuff. So we've got four roles there that could be filled by a character. So we're going to create a, uh, a patron. We're going to create a specialist. We're going to create a mercenary. And we're going to create a shopkeeper. Now I know what you're thinking. There's five different types of character we're going to create and there's only four roles there. Well, the fifth one might not have a role maybe um but we'll get to that when we get to it so and in case it's not obvious from what i'm doing we're going to be based in bastion today so we've been in deep country we've been in the underground it's time to get back to the real deal uh, the home of bastion land broadcasting bastion itself now people now i've as i go through this book and as time goes on I'm going to keep finding things where I'm like, I wish I'd done that slightly differently. And I wish this said humans, because here, I don't know, people, I'm making a statement that mockeries and aliens and machines and monstrosities aren't people. Now, you can take that however you like, um, but it, it's not meant to be as bold a statement as perhaps that claims, I think. The personhood of a mockery or a, an alien is much more likely to be you know a matter of fact like they are treated as people i would imagine um obviously just different types of people so i might have gone for humans but people um so there are all sorts and they're everywhere everybody relies on somebody for something and they're always in your way this all comes from that big rant that's in the book i think it's the only place where i swear in the entire book talking about people as a kind of an almost elemental force when you're in a city so you know comparing people in a city to trees in a forest or um the ocean when you're at sea um so that that's in the odd in the odd endum um maybe i'll read that at the end of the uh <laughs> end of the end of the uh the stream if i get time so we're going to create a person and these these inhabitants of bastion and spreads as with everything it's meant to be like a, a two-page spread i was just talking with some people actually about the book being lay flat and why that was so important because i wanted you to be able to lay this out and if you want to just sit and create a bunch of characters you can lay this flat and you don't need to worry about the rest of the book you've got everything you need here you can dip into the rest of the book for inspiration, but everything that you kind of need for the regular way of making people is on this two-page spread. So we're going to follow this. It's it's less of a procedure than the mapping. It's not quite as step-by-step -step as the, the mapping procedure is. But instead, um, well, it, it's sort of mentioned here. Um... Yeah, it sort of says, pick a template that fits what you need, roll on the spark table, and then season to taste. So we're kind of starting on this side, really. And then we're going to use this side uh, to add flavor. Normally, I would say read this, internalize it, and then use it here. But we're going to we're gonna go slightly backwards. Uh, Hoaxfish asks about Soylent Green. Yes, obviously, that is people. I don't know if you could make it with mockeries. I don't think they would be quite as palatable or nutritious I think they're mostly felt and stuffing um, so chat I'm gonna be asking you for help um, I'm not sure what sort of delay we are working on here 
Tell me, do we want a street smart civilian? Do we want muscle for hire? Or do we want a frontline leader? Now here, this is also my sneaky way of sort of, I wanted these to be broad, like their very base templates that you could use as a starting point for whatever type of character you have, but they're not just completely flavorless. Like I originally, I think I just had like civilian and they would just have their HP and their, um, it would say something like typical weapon D6 and it, it but I did want to put some flavor on there so you could literally just grab street smart civilian and you don't need to necessarily add anything onto it. There's already some flavor there, but you can kind of ignore it if it gets overruled by the other things that you roll. So I've got two votes for Street Smart from Sky Full of Dust and uh, Louis Logic. Um, and also Taki. I'm sorry, Technoscal, you are outvoted, but I hopefully your next vote will, uh, will come through. Um, so we're making a Street Smart civilian. So, oh, let's not do that. Um, so yeah, let's get our incredible document. Um, we're not going to put them in a slot yet because we don't really know what they're going to be like. So we've got our civilian here. Um, they've got three HP. They've got some chewing gum. And they've got a hidden weapon. D6. Now we will expand this. And it could just be that we expand it by coming up with a flavor of the gum. Or the hidden weapon. We sort of say what exactly the weapon is. But this is your this is your starting point. Hang on, I've I've got my my pet hate here. Let's not have any spacing. There we go. Um, yeah. So three HP chewing gum, hidden weapon, and then they've got some like moves here that they can do. This sort of three moves, if you like. Um, and it's a it just it tells you something about Bastion that most people are looking for the latest gossip. They obsess over something unrelated to their profession and they can pull their weapon if needed but lack any sort of fighting conviction. So I don't think this person is going to be the mercenary. I'm thinking they're either going to be the specialist or the shopkeeper and we'll we'll decide as the as the details unfold. So we're going to go to the spark table and we're going to roll our 2d20 that if I can drop one on the floor. Uh, I get 10 and 2. So their mana is stuttering and uh their drive is safety so they sound like kind of a nervous person um so they're kind of like stuttering and unsure and nervous um and they they just they're driven by safety so hidden weapon i like the idea that they're kind of like slightly like If they're driven by safety, it could be that they're paranoid and like they've actually got like quite a powerful hidden weapon. So we're going to say like a hidden. I'm going to put hidden pistols everywhere. So this is what I mean when it says season to taste. Like if you just put in exactly what you roll, it's not going to be. Um, it's not going to be quite exciting. So you've got you've got to add some little bits of seasoning to it yourself. Sky full of dust. Open all hours reference is not what I was expecting. Um, yeah, I, I'm not going to do stuttering because it's slightly regretful now. Look at it, <laughs> but I'm, I'm taking the kind of nervous disposition. Um, so yeah, hidden pistols everywhere. So they're kind of like they're, they're they're nervous, but that's gone beyond just being like a kind of edgy person. That they're actually kind of paranoid. Also, Taki says could be a fence. That's pretty good actually. Um, so they are a reluctant fence. So they can take goods and buy goods off you and sell them on. So I guess they're kind of a patron, really, of a sort. Yeah, because, you know, it's easy to imagine the patron as being like the typical, like, wealthy person that sat, sat on their throne. And they're like, yes, go and find me the treasure in this dungeon. And that's that's fine, it works, but it is good to try and fit a square peg into the round hole sometimes because that will you'll get interesting results more so than you will with a peg. Um, you, you'll get it's interesting to put people in places where they look like they don't belong. I always think that's good. Um, so you know, we, we could have made this guy the mercenary, 
and just had it be that he's completely like unassuming and looks and really like unimposing but um they've actually like they're actually extremely well prepared for any danger so you know i like the fact that they're a reluctant fence uh so we could put in the moves that are in there so it's like look for gossip oh obsess over something unrelated to their profession we'll come back to that and pull the weapon if needed but lack any sort of fighting conviction so we can take those general ideas and just make them fit our character a bit more we could just throw them out completely and just give them like three weird mannerisms that we like but i like taking them and just twisting them a bit so rather than pull their weapon if needed but lack any sort of fighting conviction instead i'd say like they're so they're like um so they're they're like paranoid and like they're worried that they need to keep themselves safe so let's say they've always got a plan to escape and if needed take anybody out so like as soon as they meet you they're like looking over you and they're like at some point i may need to kill you to survive um they're just like very ruthless in that sense um looking for gossip let's change that to like they're always uh looking for like a way out uh that's kind of covered with always got a plan to escape um so rather than gossip it's like they always know there was no good place to sell and then the obsess over something we've got to give them a hobby that's unrelated to their job um so in this case this is where i like to um just flick through the book and get a random career so let's go I, i'm not gonna this this the full full screen thing is more trouble than it's worth so we're gonna go to a random career page and we're gonna use it to get a hobby vault cracker so like yeah lock picking could be good but that kind of makes them a bit too useful i want it to be a completely inane hobby so if we sort of just look around at what else is on here a key flute so it could be that they play the flute what else have we got um telescope see astronomy is good that's strong um a cursed music box unlabeled food can cat food okay clearly this person's obsession is cats so they're a cat person um so we're going to change their chewing gum for pouch of cat food so you know they they're out and like, maybe they get some comfort from like feeding stray cats um there we go and we'll, while we're here we've got some sample names we've got garen phantomax ruffy stanbar now this is all well and good but didn't i put a naming thing in here Okay, I've already like forgotten what what book we're on, what page we're on. Two, three, eight. No, this is not it. Bear with me. So I think I know for a fact there's like a naming guide in here somewhere, and there's a naming trick, but I'm forgetting where I put it. So I think it's in people. We're getting there. We're getting there. Here we go. Names. I knew it. This book's got everything, hasn't it? really did think of everything and then i forgot it so it's great i get to enjoy it like it's fresh um so when my computer decides to load this pdf w when i like move the pdf i see my stream quality just like dip it's um it's tough going so my advice on names full names are difficult to remember give them a strong forename or a surname with a title instead Made up names are even harder to remember. Use existing words like Corporal Blank, Dr. Scantily, or Gusset. 
if you want to hide the meaning of the name, use a foreign or obscure word spelled or pronounced badly. For example, pig in Spanish, Spanish is, I've never had to say it out loud, cerdo. So I could badly pronounce it as curdo for a gluttonous character. So let's use that logic. We're going to give them a single name. Uh, we're going to use like a, a, a real word that's based around something to do with their character. Um, so they're kind of like, they're always looking for an escape. Escape hatch. We're going to go with hatch. And we're going to call them, uh, we're just going to go with Mr. Hatch. Like it's, it's solid. So Mr. Hatch, our reluctant fence. He has three HP, a pouch of cat food, hidden pistols everywhere. He always knows a good place to sell stolen goods. He's obsessed with cats and will do anything to meet them and protect them. And he's always got a plan to escape and if needed, take you out. So there we go. Our paranoid um, fence. There you go. Our cassowary is, yeah, odd gallop. Oh yeah, techno scaled, sad though. You can tell that I've um, read more, <clears throat> read more Spanish than I've ever had to actually speak out loud. So there we go. That's our, that's our people done. Um, you know what? When we're, we're not done, we're not done because <clears throat> at the moment this person, I don't quite have a picture of them. We've got a bit. It's good, but one of the first things here I've said about is making people memorable because at the moment I feel like they could need a little bit of pepping up. So memorable individuals, give them an immediate visual gimmick. Amplify this gimmick into their personality or contrast it with something unexpected, but make it big. Tie them into another character somehow or put them in right in the way. So we're going to tie these characters together at the end, but it needs like a visual gimmick. Um, so I think hmm, if we're going to have, if, if he's got pouches of cat food and hidden pistols, I'm imagining them having like a gigantic coat. So like skinny body in a gigantic coat because that's easy to visualize and it's kind of like amplified cartoon style things where like, you know, like for a, for a good character design in a cartoon, you should be able to s identify the character from their silhouette. I think you should be able to visualize the character very clearly from like a very short description. So it's not that good for me to sit and explain to the players like, okay, this character is about five foot 10. I'd say they're in their mid forties. He's got a very gaunt face and a, a long nose and um sort of thinning head like I, I can do all that and it it works but if i just say they've got a skinny body and a gigantic coat we might be imagining slightly different things but you're filled in some of the gaps yourself and then the personality can kind of come through i like the idea of a cat papoose as suggested by sky full of dust but i think i think this person likes cats i don't know if cats necessarily like them maybe that's the uh that's why they've got their um all the cat food because they're always trying to get like the cats to come over but then they're, they're not interested um I, I was i was just wondering whether or not i needed to close the, the window if it's too noisy outside uh do tell me. in fact we're gonna do that now because i can hear something kicking off outside um that that there's children outside having a good time and i won't abide it so um Let's have, where's my, I've lost my intermission. Here we go. Short intermission while I uh, restore our sanctity. Sorry, very easily distracted by people having a good time. It's not what I want on the stream. That's not what we, that's not what we're about. This isn't meant to be fun. Meant to be learning here. Um, okay, let's, let's get rid of you. And um, let's get back on track. 
Um, okay, so that's that's people. That took us about 25 minutes, so I'm going to try and speed it up for the others because uh, people are kind of the, the most straightforward here. Because after that, we've got arguably my favourite, the mockeries. So mockeries are... <laughs> Everyone in the chat is like making me out to be a monster and I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, key principles. The Muppets, basically. Children love them, real animals hate them. They act human, but their needs are only imitated. Um, every mockery has an innate talent for a particular task. And the talent is often trivial and rarely put to good use. Um, and yeah, you know, they're... There's there's a, there's an issue here with spacing in the, between the two paragraphs that I will pretend I can't see, um, and yeah, let's do it. So we've got slots left for specialist, mercenary, shopkeeper. Now, specialist is like too easy of a fit for a mockery because they have this idea of like they've got talents. So having your specialist be a mockery, it's just that classic thing of like. Luke Skywalker going to find the Jedi Master and realizing, oh, the Jedi Master is actually this weird little Muppet. And it's a fun thing that I have done many a time, but I want them to be different. So this mockery is gonna be the mercenary, I've decided. So we're gonna have a mercenary mockery of some sort. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> let's, uh, let's decide. We are going to have a mercenary. In fact, no, 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 no. We're not going to pick the template here first because the template is going to kind of, kind of depend on what type of mockery we get. Now, we could make a mock toad that is a mock colossus, but let, let's roll and see what we get first. Then we can choose a template that will best fit. So we have... Oh, God, yeah. Odd Geller has just pointed out that we had mercenary mockeries last week or the week before in i can't remember which one it was but we had koala mercenaries um so yeah th there's no good there's no new ideas under the sun um so we have a, a dolphin right okay so we've got a mock dolphin why, why did i put dolphin in there that's that's a ridiculous one and number nine their talent is bureaucracy a bureaucratic dolphin mercenary so we we haven't made it easy here for ourselves so i remember what i said about how this is just a tool so if we do decide to go in a different direction that's fine but i do want to try and in, in, embrace the challenge of making a dolphin bureaucratic mercenary So how would they be a bureaucrat and a mercenary? Like, yeah, Hoaxfish has mastery of sea law. So in, which one was it? I can't even remember the name of the thing that I put out. The, the, the Gorogath, whatever it was. The second of the sort of free adventures that I put out for um, Electric Bastion Land. There were these spirits let, let, let me see if i can no I, I, I can't find it um there were these spirits no you know what? I, I will find it because it's um it's probably useful um so in this free adventure that i did which you can download from itch.io i think it's technically pay what you want but i would encourage you to get it for free um so in here there were these creatures let's um let, let's just go off go off for a minute um there are these creatures called where are they interlopers and these interlopers were kind of meant to be like elementals or like demons or angels like that that kind of idea of planar beings from D D. but i wanted them to be like weird elemental so salt is not like that weird but being like a rigging elemental or a krill elemental 
I've, again, I've, I've, I've write this stuff and then I forget about it. I like the krill spirit. Um, shows contempt for things that eat things smaller than themselves. They want to be seen. They just want some reasonable stuff here. So the one that I wanted to um, direct your attention to was the hull spirit. So the hull spirit is kind of like a, 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 like a warship elemental, I guess. I'm glad that I didn't have to describe their, how they appear because you can use your imagination. Um, but they enforce archaic naval protocol. And it kind of makes me think about having a a dolphin that's like the bureaucratic element comes from like naval law and like protocol uh, like they, they, they will only do things by um if, if it adheres to like the proper protocol of war so rigorously follows naval protocol um I'm assuming how, how are they getting around I'm assuming they can like hop on their like tail because if they if they're limited to water it's going to be a bit weird but I also kind of think like mockeries in water isn't a great combination anyway so I'm imagining that he can walk somehow in fact hmm I'm, I'm very aware that I've made two male characters straight away so we're going to make the next one female because this one being like a boring naval protocol thing just feels more male to me like and I, I don't mean that as a compliment um okay so he's a mercenary he follows naval protocol um fighting packs yeah dolphins and packs pods mastery of sea law well let's choose our template and then maybe that will help us out here so they are not a rodent so originally rodent was something just like mock vermin to, to just show that it's smaller but again these are templates so if you've got like a pigeon or something just use the rodent a mock beast um or a mock colossus they're not they're definitely not a colossus i think they're probably a beast in terms of size but again these are templates so let's be let's be creative here um 7 HP sounds fine to me. They have a D8 gore. I, I don't know. I'm thinking like a D6 bite as their like physical attack. Um, strength 15. That sound. I don't think to this dolphin being especially like dex, um, especially strong, but maybe they are dexterous, so I'll give them dex 15 instead. I kind of default to 15 as like the you're good at this stat because people can agonize over like should it be 13 14 15 15 is a nice round number um hides his eyes 88 this is rimmer from red dwarf that that's that's a good shout i like it um there's, there's enough red dwarf references in this game already um okay so they've got bite um what what like weird naval weapon would this dolphin be using like like a, like a gun seems a bit too obvious or maybe they've got like a cannon maybe they have like a cannon that's being oh is it too stupid that they have like a mock cannon that's like a muppet cannon that follows them around <laughs> and they can like order it to attack I think now that I've said it out loud I need to put that in there um so yep yeah. followed by a mock cannon so that can fire for d10 a cannon's like d12 really uh, you know let, let's do a d10 blast that's pretty pretty damn big weapon so they're followed by a mock cannon the cannon's not going to be especially tough if it gets attacked itself um give me like a, a personality trait for this cannon like a living cannon um so what's 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 the deal with this cannon what, what why are, do they have a personality of their own and what is that personality the obvious thing is to make them like super excitable like a puppy 
or maybe it's like a really old cannon and it's like going deaf cowardly cheerful shy bored i do like shy actually eris shrugged eris shrugged sorry Skyflood just said pacifist and that would be like my go-to one like you just sort of directly juxtapose what you'd expect but i quite like shy because it's it's a bit more interesting it's not sometimes like the direct juxtaposition is good but sometimes like the angle is does that make any sense like if you go for the direct opposite it works but sometimes if you go in at a different angle with a different concept like shy and cannon aren't directly up you get what i'm saying shy shy but curious i feel like this cannon is going to get like a, a character arc so dolphin bureaucrat so this well we need one more Oh, so their talent is like bureaucracy, isn't it? So they, they know everything about naval law. They rigorously follow naval protocol. Yeah, something about sonar, someone said. Um, so it can like chirp. Can use sonar to detect almost anything. So they've got kind of like a radar. This is a pretty good mercenary. They, they're pretty useful to have around. For the name, we're obviously going to go with like a naval rank. Um, and then some kind of pun on like being a dolphin. <laughs> so uh, any suggestions? Like, I feel like they can't be an admiral. Captain is too on the nose. I do. I just said nose. I do quite like bottlenose as a name, because obviously, bottlenose dolphin. But like, message in a bottle, naval theme. What rank? Somebody in the chat knows more about naval ranks than I do. Like admiral, no. Captain, no. Comm Commodore is incredible. Thank you, Techno Scald. Commodore, Bottlenose, Mock Dolphin. So they are our mercenary. Mock Dolphin mercenary. Let's get rid of these because we're kind of we're kind of filling these in as we go. So great. So we're running a little bit behind schedule, but this is actually more enjoyable than I was expecting. <laughs> I think I was I was glad to be uh not glad to be finished with the maps, but I think um, I, I was ready for a change from the mapping, and I was a bit dubious about this because I've not really, I've not really sat and done this in this way. Um, but it turns out it's pretty fun. Uh, great. So we now have our shopkeeper and our specialist remaining, and we are moving on to machines. So. It's easy to see people in Bastion, and it's easy to see mockeries. By the way, do tell me if I'm aware that it's getting darker, and like this cellar chic lighting that we're going for is becoming more severe. Do tell me if it's becoming uh, too weird, and I can turn the light on. But um, I wanted to see if this would work. Um, more gentle lighting. So machines it's easy to think of them as just things that exist down in the underground and they're not in bastion but what's the first principle of bastion everything is here so machines are here as well and you know put them in there don't don't keep them as just something that's in the underground use them like you basically got robots if you want them they're like robots with a kind of specific flavor and they, they're also they're kind of more like computers but any, anything like that you can you can make it work so let's 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 just look at that because it, they're a slightly harder concept in a way to grasp than mockeries um so let's just remove me for a second um so they are machines but they always have a way to communicate
Sorry about that. Technical issues here. So, forms. They are machines, but they always have a way to communicate. They're more suited to create than to destroy. Which is good, because we've used up the mercenary option there. Their bond to the underground is often physical. So yeah, they are tied to the underground, but we can, we can have them roaming around Bastion. They follow logic, often to the extreme. They're always willing to explain. And they want to see you tested and altered and care little about you beyond that. This sounds very familiar. Um, so yeah, they they make creations. They're they're kind of like amoral things. They're not like they make good antagonists. Perhaps they're like the easiest inhabitant to slip into that villain role. But also they're not limited to that. They can they're not like evil if you like. They're just very different to uh very different to the other types of being that are around. Oh no. Um, so, we're going to use our template here. So, what do you think? Uh, no, let's, again, let's roll our sparks before we decide which template we're going to use. I've got number 17 and number 16. So, some of these are more specific than others. We've got a brass lizard, which is quite specific so brass lizard and they are um 17 it was brass lizard 16 jealous and bitter is their character hmm right okay that gives us something to work with definitely um i think i'm seeing this perhaps I just like the idea of a brass lizard running a shop. So we're going to put them in the shopkeeper role. Up here. Let, let's just move specialist out of the way. So for our shopkeeper, we're going to go for a brass lizard. Um, they're going to be jealous and bitter. Um, which template is going to fit here? Now remember that you don't get a charisma score, basically. Um, which is a weird little rule. I think I could have probably left that out because I, I like the idea that people would use common sense here, but it's a bit of a relic, this here. I think if I was writing the book today, I would not have included that little note. Um, Skyfall of Dust says, like, being jealous of a rival shopkeeper. If if you were here for any of the, the mapping ones, you'll know that that's a trope that I do go back to pretty readily. Like putting two of the same thing in a borough and making them like rivals. Uh, so we could go that way. Holographic could be cool. Um, because we could get, we don't have to use this brass lizard idea fully. It could just be that they are like brass in color and they're like projected into the shop. Um, you know what, let's do it. Let's go holographic. So they are a golden light lizard. I'm going golden because like the idea of brass light doesn't really work that well. So they are a lizard composed out of light that's kind of like that's the physical embodiment of the machine. So maybe the machine is like the rest of the shop is the machine like structurally, if you know what I mean. Like you, get, you walk into the shop and it's all like brass like walking on the in, like walking into like an old computer if you like with like just valves valves and wires everywhere but then this kind of like lizard <laughs> shape materializes out of light and that's that's the way it kind of interfaces with people okay cool um materialize out of light to greet customers um so I'm kind of thinking they could like, if they are literally like their shop is a computer, like I'm thinking like the different engine or something or like a big, I hesitate to use the word steampunk, but like a big steampunk computer. Um, so specialize, so sells electric part, electronic parts. Ooh. Let's just say machine parts because that's vague enough 
that the players might find a need for it. So sells machine parts and offers repairs. So you go in and he's like, you're looking for a replacement part. And he's like, yeah, they'll, oh, she, sorry. I'm awful. I'm aware of this. Um, yeah, we're going to go with a female light lizard here. And she, um, so she can like recommend a part of her machinery that you can kind of pull out. And like, it's like, oh yeah, you can take this valve. And you have to like serve yourself because she's immaterial. Um, oh yeah, maybe she's jealous of like the physicals. Okay, okay, okay. I'm, I can see where we're going now. Um, jealous of anybody with a physical form. And wants to be... Um, oh, I've got an idea, I can't quite put it into words. And begs you to describe sensations to her. So she's like, I've always wondered what, what does it feel like to eat an ice cream? Will you bring an ice cream into the shop and eat it for me and describe it in great detail? And then I'll let you have this machine part. It's getting pretty grim here. Like that, that's quite, <laughs> quite a weird thing to have. So here we go, seven HP, intangible form does she she doesn't need like a way to like attack i guess because what you're gonna do like blow up the shop um don't feel like you need to give every character like we could we could not give her hp because what's what's in fact i'm not even going to give her hp because what's going to happen to her where you need to use her hp she's more like a just like a force here like a presence um so yeah, credit to Fizding, sorry, for the jealous of the physicals idea. Um, so yeah, Golden Light Lizard. She has an intangible form. She will materialize out of light to greet customers. Sells machine parts and offers repair advice. And she's jealous of anybody with a physical form. And she will beg you to describe sensations to her. Yeah, what's it like to chew gum? Exactly. Um, cool. That's a creepy one. But machines tend to end up being creepy. It's just, it's just the way they go. Um, great. So by default, we are now creating our specialist from aliens. Probably, well, certainly, I think the least fleshed out of the inhabitants for various reasons. Um, believe it or not, my decision to leave out a lot of blank space in the kind of aliens, living stars area, it wasn't some, it wasn't a master plan so that I could go on to create intergalactic bastion land in the future and, and reap extra profits. It's not, that's not, um, necessarily how I, how I operate, but it, um, I realized early on that it was good to have aliens be very broad because they can fill a lot of niches and they can it, it's a little bit of a blank slate for you to stamp a bit of your own flavor onto the setting now a lot of books and games will will make this claim of saying like yeah this is an opportunity for you to fill the blanks and make your own stuff like when you buy a, an old dungeon for D&D &D and it's got like a load of empty empty rooms and it's like yeah you, you fill the rooms and I never really liked that because it's like it's like I said before like you're not giving me anything that is any better than what I could have come up with on my own like you're making me do work to make this to make this game work but you're not providing any <laughs> input to it so I still wanted to have a way to generate ideas and some sort of structure for the aliens but i wanted to keep them as broad as possible so i didn't even describe to alec how i wanted the aliens to look i said look it's aliens you do whatever you want to do um but make sure there are lots of different types there don't just have like this is how aliens look like every time you have to draw an alien make it slightly different and just go go bonkers with it because there's let me find an example. 
Um, it, you know, let, let's let's crack on because I could easily get distracted talking about the artwork. So they are more advanced than us, but in a very specific way. Their form reflects their home. They bring something with them and seek to take something back. So again, it's broad, but it's giving you something to work with. It's getting you started. There are always barriers to integration. They always have a means of communication, however ineffective. And their desires are relatable, but through an alien lens. Few can pass for human, few are outwardly hostile, and it's not clear where their bodies end and their technology begins. So it gives you enough there, I think, that you get an idea of what aliens can be, but you still, from this, can't really quite picture an alien. So that's why the spark table's here. So we're gonna roll 2d20. We're gonna get 14 and a five. So they are the knife beasts. God. So <laughs> knife beasts is, a, is pointing things in a very specific direction especially when this is a specialist so um it would be easy now to think oh you could make that into a mercenary but no let's fit this knife beast into into the the role that doesn't necessarily suit them um i think this is clearly a hard alien for like knife beast i'm kind of imagining like a uh like some of the tyranid monsters from like warhammer 40k where they just like got all these talons and claws like they're just like bristling with like organic knives so we're gonna we're gonna but we're gonna be we're gonna be um we're gonna be creative here i've got an idea but i want to see what you guys um what uh what you all in the chat decide to uh suggest so uh knife beasts we're going to call them the knife beast for now, but we will give them an actual better name than that. Um, one thing that I want to avoid is... Oh, we never named the golden light lizard. Come on. This is this is not acceptable. We will come back at the end and name the golden light lizard because she needs a name. So the knife beast. Um, Professor Procrastinator has said basically what i was thinking and i'm glad to see somebody else had that thought barber surgeon um yeah i was thinking like a surgeon like an alien surgeon um like with scalpel limbs um Fizding says taylor yeah taylor is also a good one there are lots of but remember we're we're in specialist rather than shopkeeper so if it was a sh taylor i would think of that as more of like a shopkeeper role this is someone who's not necessarily... They're providing a service. I know Taylor's a bit of a grey area there, but they're providing more of a service than they are providing, like, things to buy. Um, Hoaxfish suggests Sally for the Golden Knight Lizard. That, that's bold enough that I actually like it because I looked at it and I hated it, and then I thought, well, why do I hate it? Um, we'll leave Golden Light Lizard in because it's useful to have... That but I like that she's got a really mundane name because she's she obviously, she wants to be more, she doesn't, she, she's, she's like incredibly like bizarre, but she kind of just wants to be a normal, like physical being that can eat an ice cream. The monitor lizard is also strong, but I think, I, I like Sally, but thank you, Professor Procrastinator. Um, so Knife Beast. We're going to go for hard alien as our sort of starting point. Strength 15. Yeah, I think they should still be like quite physically imposing. Um, strength 15, 10 HP. Powered armor. Uh, I quite like the idea of them having like biological armor. So we'll go for like bio armor. Two. Um, heat gun, D8 or trample, D6 blast. So no we, we just want like i'm just gonna put like slash d8 blast i'm just imagining them having like like blade limbs like just flying everywhere so they're not somebody you want to fight but they're not they're also not somebody you are going to fight necessarily so we're stacking them up a bit like a a D, &D monster but they're going to be a character that you want to work with presumably so our three points here 
I'll show a human side. Uh, beckon humans to travel to their homeland. Okay. And translate for other aliens. Now, this is quite a broad set of like moves, but um, it, it, again, it tells you something about aliens' place within Bastion. Like, they're not necessarily here to stay. Maybe they're just working for a while, then they're going to go back. Uh, they want to translate for the radians. It, it's, it tells you something about the place of aliens within the city. So, but what is their job? Is Surgeon 2 obvious? But Barber is good, but like when, a, when are the players going to encounter a Barber? I think Surgeon is good because it's not... It's specific enough that it's more interesting than just Doctor. So they are like an actual, actual surgeon. And like, not just like a good human surgeon. These are like, this is like a premium service, I would imagine. Like you go to your uh, public health care that Bastion has. And they're like, yeah, so you, you know, you need, you need the surgery to repair your internal organs that got damaged on your venture into the underground. But you can have it repaired for free. <laughs> have it repaired what is, is that how doctors talk you can have your injury treated uh for free but there's like a waiting list or it's it's risky it might not work out um or you can pay a premium and go to dr dr blade beast dr knife beast <laughs> I, I mean dr knife beast is so ridiculous i kind of like it And that, is it two on the nose? Should it should it be spelt like phonetically so that it's like Doctor Knife Beast like that? And it's like yes, well, that is my name, and I am a a horrifying uh, horrifying knife alien. But please call me Doctor Knife Beast. Um, cosmetic surgery, sky full of dust. Yeah, that, that's that's also a nice idea, I think. But I think we're just gonna go with surgeon. In fact, surgeons aren't called doctor. I'm aware that surgeons aren't called doctor uh, in reality necessarily, but uh, we're going to call this one Doctor Knife Beast because it's it's better. Um, doctor Knife Beast. Um, yeah, so they are a blade-limbed alien. So it's like getting your Getting your surgery done by like a Carnifex. Uh, show a human side. So what do they what do they do that shows a human side? Because they're they're kind of terrifying. Um, so they like they relish in small talk. You know, like when you go to the dentist and they're trying to put you at ease. Oh, dentist would be good as well. But like they, when when you go to a dentist and they're trying to put you at ease by just like asking about if you're going on holiday this year or how's your work been, and it's 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 always really awkward because you're like in this weird chair and you're you just kind of want to be out of there but yeah so he he really really wants to just chat with you but it's horrifying so what's the like very small talk um you know they, they, they it says that there's always like an obstacle um to communication so an obvious thing is to like give them like a disgusting like tentacle mouth or something but I think maybe they just like they don't fully understand small talk, so they'll ask like two personal questions. So they'll be like, "Oh, hi! Did you have you had a nice breakfast this morning before your surgery?" Yes. Um, how how are your reproductive organs operating at the moment? Is that is that good? Um, they'll just ask inappropriate questions, relish in small talk, and uh, but doesn't understand. That doesn't understand boundaries of conversation. Um, beckons humans to travel to their homeland. Uh, I don't know. I feel like this. I feel like this. This alien has found like a true home in Bastion. Uh, give out lollipops is good. Um, ah, so Fizding says service is free as long as you don't require all human organs parts. So maybe they like. Will try to upsell you to alien parts. 
So it's like, yes, well, while I'm repairing your heart, um, I notice it's not very efficient. I could replace it with a with a, with a part from some alien species that has a, a gigantic like heart that, that beats a, a much higher level. Um, translate for other aliens. Um, I feel like this should be something to do with their relationship with other aliens, uh, but I don't like the translate idea, even though they clearly have a good grasp on Bastionese language. Um, yeah, let's give them a slightly sinister um, side. So Technoscale says alien organ trafficker. We could do that. Remain 83 says they wear a smiley mask. You know what? I quite like that because that's even more horrifying. Um, so like to put, to put the patients at ease, they have like a human, like a mask of just not a literal human face, but like a mask that's made to look like a human face. But you can still see all their like weird bug-like body with like these claws underneath. Um, matchmaking, I like it. Sky full of dust. I would not have thought of that. So um, always trying to matchmake between species. I'll leave that there. Um, so they're trying to be like, oh, if you, well, if you're single, I've got a friend. Um, I've got a friend who is uh, ripe with lava. And they are very much looking for a mate. Like they're trying to set you up with like weird alien creatures. Cool. Done. That's disgusting, but we're done. Now, the last, well, let's just take a moment to enjoy these four characters because I think we've done pretty well there. Um, Dr. Knife Beast, the blade limbed alien, Sally the golden like lizard. Um, let's, let's just clarify here. Intangible form, uh, exists within a shop sized machine body. That doesn't make any sense. When, when I'm, when I'm writing these notes, I'm kind of writing it as if I'm going to be running the game myself. I, if I was to publish this and I'll, I'll put these on Twitter afterwards, and I don't think it's going to make sense to anyone else uh, who wasn't here for the creation of it, but I sort of write these as if I'm writing them for myself because this is what you would be doing. You don't you don't need to explain it in a way that somebody else would understand because it's it's for your game. Um, Commodore Bottlenose, the Mock Dolphin Mercenary, and Mr. Hatch. Mr. Hatch is seeming very mundane now. Now that we've got this Mock Dolphin with a Mock Cannon and this intangible like lizard and this alien surgeon. But we still have one left monstrosities so this was the late the last addition to this section of the book we didn't have this in there i added it in and that they were originally called abominations but that suggested that suggested a tone that i didn't really want to go for instead the idea behind these was more i wanted to show that you can use the existing types of being but you can twist them beyond recognition. And that is the idea that monstrosities are made, they're not born. So that might, sometimes you just want to put a monster in there, something that's horrifying and it's like terrorizing the neighborhood and it needs to be, needs to be killed or driven away or pacified somehow. And you can use like just a wild animal for that, like some unintelligent creature, but I wanted, if you were going to use something intelligent for that, I wanted it to be that they were made that way by something. They weren't just born evil. Because this is a little bit more interesting, I think, in my experience. And it creates a little bit more moral grey area. But not too much. Um, a lot of the inspiration was obviously things like your classic like Frankenstein's monster where there's always a compelling set of reasons to see them destroyed. So these are one of the few types of being in here where they are, I would kind of go out of my way to make them, you can make them sympathetic, 
but make sure there's also something else balancing that out because if they're just sympathetic then the players it, it's not a moral choice if it's like well of course we're not going to kill this thing it's it's perfectly it's clearly just like a lost confused animal but you've got to add in something that makes it go beyond that where it's like oh can we leave this thing to be it, even if we drive it away is it going to just continue to to do whatever things that it's doing now to like cause terror so yeah this is your kind of closest you'll get to monsters like traditional DD monsters but i wanted to think about what actually makes a monster and how can we make that interesting so yeah every monster is unique um wherever they are their surroundings become more monstrous in return um they are instantly recognizable as monstrous and they seek places where they can stay solitary but they're always well, often drawn to others by need or curiosity so yeah it's the frankenstein references are pretty pretty clear here um there's always somebody let's hide myself so you can actually see what i'm talking about uh, there's always somebody that wants them dead there's always somebody fascinated by them and they're as likely to be human machine animal mockery alien so yeah i need to stop doing that um so let's do it we've got two spark tables here because monstrosities are twice as complex as anything else um our first is going to give us the origin and the modifier so just like the basics of what was this thing and what are they now um we have 16 and 17 okay so they their origin is they were a mobile machine so basically yeah a machine that's able to move around and the modifier was an ancient oddity so some oddity was either used to twist them or became a part of them so let's see so we've got so far we've got mobile machine plus oddity let me let me move this so you can actually see what i'm writing that will be useful there we go so mobile machine and oddity um ancient oddity even okay cool so that gives us something and then our theme and danger our theme oh i've got the same i've got 15 and 15. their theme is fear and the danger is weaponized environment so it's a machine the theme is fear and they can weaponize their environment somehow um okay chat give me some give me some thoughts so weaponize environment we'll just put that as a move for now but we'll, we will actually make it work and what was your thing fear um okay so how would a mobile machine weaponize their environment and have kind of fear as a thing i'm getting like weird like robot freddy krueger <laughs> ideas which is kind of a bit too silly now remember this isn't just going to be a machine it has to go beyond that so we had in machines the idea that they are like testing people sky full of dust says fairground machine ghost train i, I kind of like the idea of it being like a ghost train monster um fizzding says scarecrow okay yeah you know what i quite like the idea of like an urban scarecrow but like um so weaponized environment again we could we're not locked into this legally i haven't signed a contract to say i'm definitely going to use that if we come up with an idea that's like adjacent to that and it's still good i would say use it so i quite like the idea of them being like a scarecrow or like a scaring birds away but they can like control the birds and weaponize them somehow 
Um, Professor Procrastinator says, a burrowing centipede robot that causes earthquakes. Yeah, that's also good. Um, maybe they are... You know, I quite like the whole burrowing centipede thing. So let's get our template. We're going to go big. We're going to say that they are a giant beast. So we're going to go strength 18, 15 hit points. So this is a big thing. Um, armor 2. So they can have claws and bite. Um, I'm just going to go mandibles because it's a great word. Uh, so the mandibles are going to be like... Uh, that's the d10 bite sort of equivalent or trample like a trample is always a good bet and i just tend to use trample as like a blast attack um so they are like a huge metal centipede um so maybe they're like so we'll come back to their weaponizing environment thing Maybe they they want to monitor something of their machine. So they want to like um, they want to monitor earthquake response time. So maybe they were originally like they would cause like minor earthquakes to like test how well people would respond to it. Um, weaponize the environment. So, cause minor earthquakes to test response time. Right, let's, 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 let's lump these together. Cause minor earthquakes to test response time. If, they, if the inhabitants do not respond appropriately, yeah. effectively, they collapse the whole building. So it's like if they're not going to follow the earthquake response code correctly, they're going to bring down the whole thing. Now where does this ancient oddity thing fit in? Maybe they're like possessed by, possessed by some kind of sentient oddity. Hmm... You know what? I think rather than actually causing earthquakes, let's go with conjure illusionary fires to test response time. Ah, yeah. Okay, okay. So here's what they do. They are... Oh, we're, we're, we're losing focus again. They are like... They're possessed by the... They've got some kind of like weird oddity that's a part of them. That's like some something to do with illusions. And they create illusionary fire. And if the inhabitants of the building don't respond correctly to the fire, then he just bursts through and like eats them. It's, it's not the most nuanced. It's kind of too complex, but also too simple. But, um, you know, that works okay. So what's the nature of this, um, the nature of this like illusion thing that they have? Maybe it like absorbed a forgotten tome of, that, that's, that's lame. We're not doing that. Um, I was going to say they like it absorbed like an illusion spell book sort of thing, I guess. But that's, that's not very, not very fitting. Um, so if we hit this kind of slight dead end and we, we could we could probably stumble through I think we can it, there's no shame at all in re-rolling so the modifier was this kind of ancient oddity idea now I don't think it's it's not sort of conjuring much in the way of evocative ideas for me so if you don't like your result on the table you could roll again but we could be here all night so let's just look through and choose one so what 
gave them this kind of weird illusionary fire uh, thing. So I'm thinking like human science seems like an obvious thing. Like this machine was like harnessed by the fire safety board and it was meant to do a job, but it, it ended up being too effective at it. So yeah, it was like created by the Borough Fire Response Council. So it's like an extreme form of fire drill, but it, it took it too far. And it, it, all it was meant to do was create these fake fires so people could like have a an immersive fire drill. <laughs> you know what, let's, let's just call it immersive fire drill simulator. Rogue immersive fire drill simulator. Catch your name. Um, and let, let's just give it one more. It needs it needs a twist because at the moment this is not it's not filling me with too much. Um, it's not filling me with much excitement here. So let's let's look back at our spark tables because, like I said, you can choose what you want. So is there anything else in here that we could? So it, it was fear, wasn't it? We didn't. Re I guess it kind of works with fear with the like illusion thing. Um, what else could it have? Um, you know what? We're going to go back to the machine thing and we're going to give it a character here from the machine section. So I'm going to roll a d20. I'm going to score an 8 and that's going to get me a... No, that's a 6. Uh, Devil's Advocate is the character. So it's like, we'll explain exactly why I know that's not really what devil's advocate is but they, they were like we'll try to explain why they are doing the right thing so they, they feel like they're providing like a useful service like I say it's, it's not quite devil's advocate but like they're, they're devil's advocate for themselves if you like so the rogue immersive fire drill simulator huge metal centipede it's big. It can. It was created by the Borough of Fire Response Council. It can conjure illusionary fires that test response time, and if the inhabitants do not respond effectively, they erupt from the ground. They destroy the whole building, and they will try to explain why they are doing the right thing. So there's a valid reason why you would want to see this destroyed. Um. There we go. We've got it. That's our monstrosity. So that is. A job well done. We have got five characters. It took us just over an hour, but there was lots of talking as well. Um, <laughs> Professor Procrastinator. It tries to convince people to stay in the burning building. There's a weird kind of twisted logic. I quite like that as a kind of take on Devil's Advocate. Um, yeah, I, I like that. Intentionally give bad advice. Like it's, it's part of the test so it's like it sort of sticks its head out the ground and there's there's fire erupting all around it and it will say like um please remain within um please remain within the burning building and uh if somebody obeys it then it's like well i uh, know that's not actually what you meant to do and it, <laughs> it eats them so it's it, it's not very sympathetic this thing it's clearly just like a giant malfunctioning machine that needs needs to be <laughs> removed i think um, so that is our five, uh, our five characters. I will put these on Twitter, um, shortly after the stream. Thank you again for all of your help doing this. It's always interesting because there's so many ideas there that I wouldn't have had on my own. And obviously I've got the bark tables giving me something. I've got the people in the chat and it, it just all comes together it's, it's, it's been good fun um i think this is possibly going to be the last bastionland broadcast for a, a little while i'm going to take a short break maybe a few weeks um because i want to look at a few other ideas 
it will definitely be coming back at some point but this will be the last one for a little while um, if you want to stay up to date with when the streams will be returning you can follow me on Twitter at Bastionland you can follow the Twitch channel now there's a follow button up there somewhere um, and more importantly as always you can find everything to do with Bastionland at bastionland.com um, and Patreon sorry I, 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 it's that time of the month again where I I recommend that you check out Patreon if you are enjoying the stuff that I'm making because it makes a big difference to being able to do it um, and the link to my Patreon is on uh, on bastionland.com in the sidebar in other news it is the Ennies on a week on Friday I believe um, and Bastionland is nominated for best writing um, and I have to do like a I don't have to but I've been invited to record a an acceptance speech in advance without knowing whether or not um, I've won an award I suspect I won't because as, as we've discussed multiple times I think Mork Borg is gonna sweep the awards um, but I've got the opportunity to record a video and send it in so that if it does win it'll flash up a video and I have no idea what to do so if you have any ideas for what I could do I've got to record it this week so find me on Twitter at Bastiland and tell me what should I do for my um, acceptance video that is probably never going to see the light of day with that in mind thank you again for joining me and it might not be next week and it might not be the week after but I will see you soon. Stay safe. If you frequent a big city, you'll know that all the buildings and cars and pigeons are nothing in comparison to all the bloody people. Now, imagine it on Bastion scale. There are all sorts and they're everywhere. Picture a person. They'd fit somewhere in Bastion. Give them some stupid gimmick. Don't worry, they still fit somewhere. If planning a dungeon is all about drawing maps and rooms and making monsters, planning a borough of Bastion is all about making people. Even when you're creating exciting city locations, someone has wandered over there. They can't be stopped. What sort of person would even want to be here? People you talk to are non-player characters, everyone else is scenery. They're the trees in the forest slowing you down. They're the boggy ground drowning your horse. They're the sheer cliff face between you and the treasure. They're the wolves waiting to eat your corpse. Some say to give everybody in your game a name, but in Bastion, the vast majority of people you see remain nameless. You won't even hear most of them speak but they're acting out their own plans and urges and getting swept up with everybody else. If you're going to have details, either give none at all or more than they can handle. If you notice a guy with a huge moustache, you also notice the bridal party and the child leading a baby elephant and the student sports team and the singing drunks. If you go faceless, give them the mood of the crowd, the overall sounds, smells, movement. Don't let the players ever feel like they're on their own. Everything you want is tied to some person in some way. An avalanche, a new weapon, a priceless treasure. Each of those things can be replaced with people. Get your paintbrush, dip it into the tin marked people and cover as much as you can. The avalanche is a riot. The weapon is a mercenary. The treasure is a hostage. Armour is lackeys, skills are specialists, knowledge is librarians. And those things that are just straight up things? Somebody owns that. Somebody else wants it. Somebody else thinks that nobody should be allowed to have it. Got a plan? There are three people in the way of getting what you want. Mastery of people is mastery of Bastion. With all the weird powers you might pick up on your travels, you're nothing on your own in Bastion. Great fighters don't make a difference here.
but an army can. Unions are everywhere because people are the most significant currency out there. It's great for those on top, and those underneath sometimes feel valued by the whole arrangement, sometimes. Getting killed is awful. Losing an ally, not so bad. The worst adversary you can have isn't a brute with a big gun, it's the brute's boss. Does it matter if your ability scores are all below 10 when you've got a bodyguard and a personal thief and a public relations assistant following you around? Does your 2 HP matter when you're never the one on the front line? Even great people are never great at everything. So start building your contact list now.